All right. So um, because the group is uh, because the group is so small, um, I do want to take some time and and just uh, let let everybody actually introduce, um, stand up, and say hi. Uh, we will do a lot of table shuffling, so you'll get a chance to talk to a lot of people. But in the spirit of building community as one of the main goals of this meeting and of this organization, I think it's important that we see faces and names and, and learn where you're from. And less than 30 seconds, I'll give a demo. I always, when I ask my students to do things, I'm like, I'll show you what I mean by this. So I would stand up and say, hello, my name is Erica Werwin from Michigan State University. I'm an assistant professor and chair of the undergraduate program committee. I am a bachelor's from a bachelor's degree program in physiology. Um, that has about 400 students in it. And my main goal here is develop national program guidelines. Okay, so that's the kind of snippet that we're looking for, right? So your prompts are up there to help guide you. Uh, if you have more to say, feel free. Um, but Claudia, you can go first. Oh, okay. You'll be our role model. So no mics, huh? We can hear okay? Can you guys hear me right there? Yes. Okay, so I'm Claudia Stanescu and I'm from the University of Arizona and uh, my uh, title is Assistant Professor on the Educator Scholar Track. I'm also the Director of the uh, Undergraduate Physiology major. Um, we have a, actually an interesting degree, it's a Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. Um, and um, program size is very large. We have uh, 1,850 students as of spring 2018. Um, and uh, my uh, interest is also in national guidelines. I'm, I'm really interested in, uh, in learning more about also professional skills and how to incorporate more concepts into our courses. Yep. Okay. Yes. Mine's easy. So I'm, I'm Zoe Cohen. Pretty much ditto. <laughs> what what says. So I'm from the University of Arizona as well. Um, so I don't have to go through all of that, that part. Um, I, I got my bachelor's in a kinesiology program, my master's in an exercise physiology program, my PhD in a physiological sciences program. So there's been a lot of change in, in titles. Um, what I'm hoping overall is, is really just to get an idea of, of what we're teaching and how and that translates to uh, future careers or, or um, employment. So, in that, I work for Claudia, work for Zoe, work for, for, for Cindy, work for John, work for a lot of people in this room. Uh, I trained in physiology and biophysics in, in England, the University of East Anglia. I've been doing this thing a long time, so for over 40 years, and I've, I've begun to look at it through kind of systems thing, how, how we work as an ecosystem and what we need input to keep us surviving, how, how groups survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Davina Dobbins. I'm also from the University of Arizona. I'm a senior instructional professional here, so I co instruct classes with Dr. Rankin. Um, and they're focused on professional development, they're also the new within our department. So I'm most interested in learning about how to improve this program and reach more students here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Deandra Green, and I'm not <laughs> I'm from Nova Southeastern University in Florida. I'm an associate professor and assistant chair of my department. My department is from the biological sciences. We have about a thousand bio majors, approximately 550 students coming through our anatomy and physiology uh, courses, one and two every year because of course they're all pre and we have an advanced human physiology course as well, the senior state. I'm also interested in, um, you know, standardizing our, um, you know, how we teach our students. But I'm really excited to be here this year because I learned so much from the last uh, conference last year. For example, I gave the FISMAPS exam this year in my advanced human physiology class. So I'm just really interested in learning. Thanks. Gotcha. All right, I'm Jennifer Roberts from Our department went from a very small exercise science department to the largest undergraduate major on campus. We have 2,000 students total, 900 of those are human physiology. We also have a problem with human physiology. Um, so, what I'm here for, every single topic that we're going to talk about today is human physiology. So, a lot today, but not really well. Um, so, I have a hard time narrowing it down, but I really like the assessment. We talk about this. Let's form a plan, let's test it out, let's see how we do with the new numbers.
Oh, sorry, I'm a bit quiet, am I? Okay, so we have about 700 students that do a major in the physiology and the Bachelor of Science. We also have about 700 students that do a Bachelor of Biomedical Sciences in which they do a physiology major as well. Uh, I'm here because I'm so excited to be in a room full of physiology educators. Um, we wouldn't reach this critical mass at home in Australia. And I'm also passionate, as with Erica and Claudia, about professional development of students and um, employability skills development, which I'll be talking about tomorrow. But I'm very keen to hear about the core concepts in physiology and the role of lab classes, because we're actually undertaking a review of our physiology major at the moment out at Monash. Thank you. Hello, I'm Randy Briner from West Virginia University. I am the interim chair of the exercise phys program and the director of the undergraduate program. Um, we are the largest program in the School of Medicine and continue to grow. Um, I was just told this week we're going to have the largest undergraduate class we've ever had and we're drowning and we're trying to figure out how to best serve our students. Um, I think just like I've heard from everybody and talking to Erica, I mean, we're really interested in, we're not your traditional exercise phys program. We really have become more of a system physiology program. Um, at the School of Medicine, they have a graduate physiology. We serve as the undergraduate program. So we're really trying to figure out what, how best to uh, meet our needs of our students and everything that's been said here. I'm obviously interested in trying to figure out especially as the chair of the program. Last thing I'll say is our department is, big long name, Human Performance and Applied Exercise Science. So we are with PTOT and XFIS. We're the, we've just become the main feeder to everything medicine, all of those programs. And so we have a very diverse group of students and we're just trying to figure out what's the best way to accommodate them and to educate those students. Hi, I'm Cindy Rankin. I'm also from University of Arizona. Uh, so you know all of that part already. I'm the associate director of the undergrad program along with uh, work uh, with Claudia to help with that program. I've taught uh, physiology for 35 years, really focused on active learning and getting students involved. And after th that much teaching time, I really realized how much active learning needs to happen outside the classroom, outside the, the walls of where we dispel or share information, I should say. Um, so the idea that labs are important, that learning outside the classroom, getting involved in internships, employability skills, hands-on learning in places where they may eventually put their physiology to use is really what's most uh, poignant in my mind right now after having taught a lot of physiology for a long time. So I'm sort of seeing it at a very different point of view. I was trained as a motor control specialist and learned physiology all the way along the way in many different critters. But now I really want to work with people getting jobs in some way after that. So um, that's enough for now. Thanks. Uh, I'm at Edmonds Community College. Uh, we have no majors. We have no program. I mean, a biology program, but we have no majors. We're here at college. Um, so I'm passionate about really three things. One is um, half of the STEM undergraduates um, and probably more than half of the people taking physiology in the country right now are at two-year colleges. They are our students. I have students um, that are going to Mary Pat and students that were in Mary Pat's class that are finishing. We have post back students. We have under, we have high school students. Um, but our students are your students. And if you're developing guidelines without awareness of what the community colleges in your regions are doing, you are doing two years of an undergraduate program, not four. And you need to really keep that in mind. And so that's one of the reasons I'm here. We have amazing students that bring diversity to your campus. And often those students were coming back to our campus because, you know, they got a biochem degree but didn't take A&P and they're going <laughs> and they need it. So we see that. So I'm very passionate about physiology at community colleges. Um, I'm also been engaged in the work of trying to, um, identify core concepts in physiology, unpack them into conceptual frameworks, and looking at conceptual assessment in physiology with a group that includes Mary Pat and Joel Michael, who was here last year, and Harold Medell and Bill Cliff and um, a few of us. And finally, um, for the last 
five years, I've been deeply engaged in the mission of um, the recommendations of vision and change, especially recommendation number three, which is department level change. So the Pulse Fellows have a set of department rubrics. We have um, ways of helping departments regionally and going to your department um, to help you engage in the process of change, which is not always easy. And it's nicer when outsiders are involved. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. Hi, I'm Jessica Taylor. I'm with the American Physiological Society, where I'm the senior manager for higher education programs. So I don't actually have any students. But what we do have are several undergraduate geared programs, including fellowships, which I'll talk about, and then programs that we put on at different events throughout the year in meetings. And so I am interested in how APS can support the development of curricular guidelines as well as core competencies and how we can assist with the professional skills training that goes on in your classrooms. Hi everyone, my name is Barry Mason. I'm from the University of British Columbia up in Canada. I'm the Associate Director of our Medical Curriculum for Years 1 and 2, and I'm a, a co-director of a Developing Physiology Majors Program. We have a Historical Honors Program which graduates 12 students per year, and now we're shifting our focus to a lot larger, and Jen Rogers it really struck a bell. Uh, we, we're going to be expanding rapidly. So I'm quite interested in the core concepts. I'm quite interested in the logistics of labs, and in the assessment tools that people are using. Thank you. I am Vincent Barnett from the University of Minnesota. Um, I'm the director of our undergraduate program, which last year I told you was physiology. We've just changed the name to human physiology. So uh, the name, you know, the names vary throughout the programs. We'll, we'll be all of them. Um, we have, as of spring, 366 majors, uh, and our program has been growing. Um, I think that the issues that I'm most interested in at this conference are the core value, uh, core competencies, uh, the assessments of students, and uh, of course, uh, since I do most of the advising, physiology specific advising for those 366 students, um, how do we prepare them for the next step? Mary Pat Windreth, <clears throat> University of Washington. I'm a principal lecturer there, so that's a non-tenure track. Uh, we have a biology program of which students can then select tracks. So we have 1,400 bio majors and approximately 300 are in the physiology track. Uh, the particular issues, I am about assessment, right? Developing assessments, then using those assessments to not only assess our students, but to assess our teaching, and then also to inform how we can develop new teaching methods in order to get our students to up those upper levels of those learning progressions rather than being down there at the, the want to need area. My name is Kelly Swadich. I'm from Colorado State University. I'm a professional academic advisor. Um, our uh, BS is in biomedical sciences, and I've been with the program since it started in 2005. Um, we are a capped major, so we are capped at 300 students. We would definitely grow if we were allowed to do that, and that may be in the near future. Um, and I am excited to hear about all of the kind of student affairs kinds of pieces. I'm actually missing the Health Professions Association uh, conference that's in Washington, D.C. right now so that I could come to this one. Hello, I'm C.W. Miller. I'm from Colorado State University, and Kelly and I direct the major. As she said, it's a cap major, but we're going to be growing probably uh, 50 to 100 per year because uh, of the administration. Um, we used to be um, physiology and biophysics and anatomy and neurobiology. Those two departments merged. We voted three times not to merge. The dean then said we are merged. We became the biomedical sciences department. And um, Andrew, we feel your pain about the name because our biomed biomedical sciences, which is really anatomy and physiology, is going to become a, a college major. We're now going to become a concentration. So help us figure out a name. I'm interested in the assessment pieces. Uh, Kelly and I have been trying to ask the faculty to be a little more involved in having uh, student course objectives more religiously and also program student learning outcomes and been a lot of resistance because it's a lot of work. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michelle French. I'm from the University of Toronto Department of Physiology. And uh, we have a relatively smallish I guess, um, group physiology students, so I guess around 300 total. 
um, maybe three to four hundred. Um, and I guess why I'm, I'm the vice chair of undergraduate um, for education for the Department of Physiology. I've just been appointed special advisor to the Dean of Medicine for innovation in undergraduate education, a new role which I have no idea what I have to do. So, um, And I'm really interested in being here because uh, our the university and our government is, is asking us to develop program learning outcomes that will be tied to the funding that goes to the university. And there's also a big push for so-called work integrated learning or experiential learning. So I'm interested in those two areas. I'm Jeff Osborne, I'm professor in the Department of Biology at the University of Kentucky. Um, we have approximately 2,000 majors that range everywhere from ecology and ecosystems type folks all the way to physiology and microbiology. So we're across the board. Um, I run the um, majority of the physiology courses in, in the department. It is still a uh, requirement of our biology majors. So I'm kind of <laughs> on a different um, perspective. Um, I've been a professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin for 18 years and um, and I started a K through 12 school in Hartford, Connecticut for inner, inner city kids. Uh, so I've kind of gone at the full gamut from, uh, 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 from pre-K all the way through, through medical school. And, uh, I'm also chair of the, uh, education committee at the American Physiological Society. So I'm very interested in undergraduate programs and, and figuring out how to, how to connect, uh, the APS effectively, uh, to the constituents, uh, which, which are, are the membership of APS. Hello, I'm Patrick Crosswhite, Assistant Professor at Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. Uh, our program is a Bachelor's in Human Physiology. We have about 180 majors. That has rapidly changed since they tr uh, changed the name from an exercise, uh, exercise physiology program to just human physiology. Um, the program continues to grow. It, our resources are really strained. Um, Traditionally, most of our students had been physical therapy, occupational therapy, but now a majority of our students are now uh, medical school or PA school. So a wide variety of students that were trying to get into health programs. Uh, particular issues I'm interested in, I've been a little bit uh, started integrating core concepts into my physiology course. I'm looking to do that. Um, more so in the future, uh, and so uh, looking forward to that, and also the advising aspect, because that was one thing as I just finished my second year. Um, the advising was something that caught me off guard in terms of my job responsibilities, so. I am Dr. Ram Reddy from India. I teach uh, human physiology for medical graduates and engineering graduates. So the duration of course for uh, medical graduates is one year, and duration of course for engineering graduates is uh, six months. I teach both uh, graduates and postgraduate. And I am a chairman of research committee of Apollo Institute of Medical Science. I'm more into the computational aspects of uh, physiology. So my perspective is uh, totally from theoretical perspective. That's why I regularly teach the engineering graduates, both graduates and postgraduates. Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Kearney Anderson and I am an assistant professor at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Integrative Biology and Physiology. And so uh, Vince Burnett is my uh, colleague. Um, our offices are right next door to one another and we have to go to conferences to talk to one another. Um, uh, in four days, I will become the director of education in our department. And um, so a lot of that is going to involve um, making sure that the courses are covered, who's teaching assignments and that kind of thing, and uh, making sure the tenure track folks, uh, so we have a, we have a academic track that's not, t not tenured and they do the bulk of the teaching and then we have some uh, tenure track folks that need to get their teaching in um, so that uh, they can get tenure. And I am very, very interested in core concepts that we, that we figure out what we teach based on what the students need as opposed to what the, 
researchers want to talk about, even though the stuff they want to talk about is way cool. Um, so that's a, that's a, um, I, I can see that's just going to be a great part of my job. Um, and uh, I'm very, very, so I'm very, very interested in core concepts. Okay, I'm going to put a shameless plug in for my poster. I did a, I have a critical thinking exercise on homeostasis. Please come and give me feedback on it. Um, and I'm very interested in critical thinking and what that is and modeling it for students and figuring out how to assess when the students are doing that. Um, and so I'm excited about this aspect of the conference. Hi, my name is Nancy Eicher. I did my graduate work at Michigan State many, many years ago in physiology. I now live in Vermont, and I teach at the Community College of Vermont and at Vermont Technical College. So as I'm an adjunct, so you know, pretty much full-time work, part-time compensation. Um, we teach at the Community College. We have... Uh, um, semester one and two of a combined anatomy and physiology course, and that's it for the physiology. I, I did kind of a rough estimate. I think we might have three to 500 students per semester, and that we have 12 locations of this community college. Um, it, most of the students um, who take this class are going into the allied health, um, nursing, dental hygiene, respiratory therapy. And for them, especially saying someone who goes on to be an RN, this is the only physiology class they're going to have and so I'm concerned with the rigor of the course so the course objectives the 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 core concepts I'm interested in I also would interested in the idea about the labs um what what are we expecting of the labs some people teach it online and um other other times it's on site and so what are we expecting there also the assessment I'm interested in the leap up and the assessment and the last thing would also be um that the having to do some advising and the um what's employable how do we how do we work that in while we're teaching our content, so. Hi, I'm Ann Chrysalius. I'm from the University of Dayton, where I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Health and Sports Science. So we're a department of about 500 at our university of about 9,000. About 300 of those are pre-health, I would say, and split between exercise physiology, pre-physical therapy, and exercise science. So I advise those ex-phys majors, which um, we're actually currently in the process this summer of reorganizing into likely a health science major with a hopeful physiology concentration. So um, with that in mind, I'm interested in names of things, but also um, outcomes, assessments. And also um, last year, my colleague Carissa Crane was here from the Department of Biology. We're one of those institutions where we also have a pre-medicine major as well as a biology department with a strong biomedical focus. So discussions around how multiple departments at one institution can work together and contribute to some of these things when we draw primarily from the, our College of Arts and Science to provide all of our lower level biology courses that are sort of out of our control and then they come to us in their upper level um, years. Uh, I'm Jim Davis. <clears throat> I'm an assistant professor at Indiana State University. I'm also the program director for the exercise um, science undergrad and graduate program. Uh, we have, I'm here in, as an undergrad, I guess uh, in the undergrad uh, role. Um, our, I think we had 332 majors as of spring of this past year. Um, some of the issues or the things that I want to learn about is uh, things that I can do to help kind of modernize the program. We've got a very old school mentality where it feels like I'm back in the 80s in many cases. So we're trying to bring kind of more physiology into it. Plus, I have a unique role in that um, just about everybody in the college uh, takes the physiology class that I teach. And so I want to make sure that I am hitting everything that they need. And so I'm very excited to learn about the core concepts and assessment and then also the professional skills. Hi, I'm Dee Silverthorne. I'm at University of Texas at Austin. And for the last two years, I've been professor of physiology in our brand new Dell Medical School. But before that, I had 30 years of teaching physiology to undergraduates, and I still am in charge of the undergraduate anatomy and physiology uh, program, which is not really a program. We have 4,000 biology majors, and we put about 700 students through a one-semester physiology course every year. And um, 
I'm interested in seeing undergraduate physiology courses grow because my time in the medical school, especially with the recent changes in medical education, have convinced me that it is the undergraduate physiology courses that are preparing students the best to be physicians. Like, I don't know if anything we're doing as a group sort of can leverage anything to do with med school decisions, like requiring a physiology prerequisite or anything like that. Like, that's not something that's possible. It's just because you mentioned that, like that. It should. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Very briefly, Del Med is, has an innovative curriculum where we're doing all of basic sciences in 12 months. Um, I basically get uh, 10 weeks to teach them all of physiology. With uh, They theoretically are supposed to learn pathophys later, but they haven't. Our students are going, why don't you have physiology as a prerequisite? We tried to get it through uh, for the, and, but it would have to be a state of Texas and adopted across all of our state medical schools. But um, our students are clamoring for making physiology a prerequisite. Hi, I'm Terry Sweeney. I'm professor and chair of biology at the University of Scranton, and I'm also program director for our new undergraduate Bachelor of Science in Physiology uh, program that's 14 months old. Uh, so uh, biology and related programs have been uh, really a major driver at the university. We're a small school with about 3,000 undergraduates total. Uh, for example, this year with an incoming class of 900 total, 180 of those are either biology, physiology, neuroscience, biochemistry, cell and molecular biology, and environmental science. All of those run through the biology department. And so name becomes important. The distinction between these programs becomes important. Um, I think I'm primarily here because of our new physiology major, and so I'm interested in not only assessment, but ironically both promotion and control of growth. Uh, because I've heard stories from here about how growth can get a little out of hand, uh, and we have a small capacity, and so we want to deliver the best program that we can within the confines of what we're able to do. Um, hi, I'm Ron Lynch, a professor of physiology here in the University of Arizona. Um, I teach mostly at the medical school and graduate level. I have uh, I've trained over 70 undergraduate students in my lab, uh, so I've mentored a lot of undergraduate students. Um, my interest really is what Dee raised, and that is, you know, with the medical school curriculum changing dramatically and moving a lot of the basic science out, there's a real move at the national level to look at undergraduate education as the prerequisite for medical school. And how we fill that role is going to be very important. And I'm currently on council for the American Physiological Society. It's one of the things I'm very involved in. Oh, by the way, Terry was a postdoc here, so he takes any opportunity to come back. <laughs> so, hello everybody. My name is Gabor Girkovic from Vermont, uh, coming to the College of Vermont. And um, I came over from the dark side of research to teaching. And, and uh, so everything I hear here is, is for my benefit. So as, as Nancy told us, uh, Vermont is an interesting state. Uh, community college has 12 we call them um, uh, sites instead of campuses. And we have a few hundred students, like a couple of hundred physiology and anatomy students, but it's a fluctuating number. Sometimes I feel that we are just fighting for survival. Sometimes we are flooded with students. It depends on the demand because these students go for nursing. So um, uh, what else? This is our particular issue. <laughs> Hi, I am Nancy Aguilar Roca. I'm from the University of California at Irvine. I'm an associate professor of teaching, so she's so happy about having teaching professors. 
So I'm in the tenure track that's determined by teaching more so than research. Uh, I'm from our School of Biological Sciences. We have about 900 to 1,000 bio majors graduating every year. I'm in the Department of Ecology and Evolution, and we have a physiology subgroup within that with a small exercise sciences major of about 12 to 15 students per year class. Uh, they start as bio majors and then transition as juniors. We are about to start a brand new department in physiology. We've been trying to come up with a name for two years, just to give you a little heads up. We started with integrative physiology, it flipped around for two years, and we're back to integrative physiology as a working title. Uh, particular issues, uh, UCI just became one of the only research intensive Hispanic serving institutions. So addressing diversity both within our undergraduates, our graduate students and our faculty has come up a lot in discussions. And we are very aggressively going to community colleges who are also Hispanic serving and trying to get more students into our program. Hi, I'm John Kennedy. I'm a lecturer here at the University of Arizona, and uh, I teach uh, introductory undergraduate physiology for majors and non-majors. Um, I'm also working on expanding out uh, online course offerings for physiology. Particular issues I'm um, interested in, in uh, one is uh, fostering community among students themselves. Um, also for um, really uh, how the, the practical aspects of how we can unpack core concepts for students uh, you know just looking at you know flow down gradients that's a lot of stuff um, and I'm just really interested in learning about all the challenges that other programs have and, and learning as much as I can from all of you Martin? Um, hi, my name is Marnie Paris Bingle, and I'm working here at the University of Arizona, working with Dr. Delamere and Dr. Stanescu as a student uh, recruitment and retention specialist. So I'm looking at, my background is in advising, and so I'm looking at all our advising services. How do we attract students? How do we retain those students and provide really good services while they're in our program for um, retention? So. I'm interested in talking to anyone about advising, so. So I'm gonna stay seated, so I don't have to move things around, but I am Valerie Van Ryan. I'm the one that's been emailing you constantly. I'm also from Michigan State University. I also work with uh, Erica up front. Um, I am mostly here to observe and take notes, but my contribution lies in buy-in, both of students and uh, professors. I personally was a pre-med student who realized I didn't want to be a doctor and I stayed with the major, but other students don't buy into that very well because uh, they're not encouraged to by their professors. Like physiology majors are supposed to go on to further education. If you don't do that, there's no place for you. There's no place in the workforce. We're not uh, creating an environment where those students are attractive. So I want to be able to uh, better discuss that with students and encourage them that you can be a physiology major and have a future outside of that. And then also other faculty members that uh, these are reasons why you should be educating these students. They have these great qualities that you should continue to uh, help train them to do other things. Very nice, thank you. And Valerie is another secret weapon, just so everyone knows. Um, so um, I just wanted to point out that we have uh, outlets underneath the tables, if any of you want to plug in for your computers. Uh, our our uh, timing is a little shifted, and we're going to be taking care of that towards the end. So we're going to stick with the same amount of time for each presentation. So I'm going to turn this over now to uh, Jeff Osborne for introductions for our next, next uh, set of uh, presentations on the professional organizations.